can't say Viper V10. I'll V10 Viper. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jeremy, you're up. Alright, Jeremy, you're up. We're buying what Shannon calls a death machine. <laughs> because America. We are at a dirty truck stop in Michigan. <laughs> Why are we here, you ask? Well, it's because we're going to go buy something awesome. And we have a pocket full of cash, which means we should probably get out of this dirty truck stop <laughs> and go to our beautiful destination of Flint, Michigan. What are we doing? Get a death machine. Yes. It's currently not actually a death machine. There's no engine in it. If only there was an engine that we had access to that would be awesome. Mmm. Viper, baby! Yeah. Oh, I thought we were going to case swap it. <laughs> <laughs> this is America, goddammit. We're buying what Shannon calls a death machine. And we're going to put in a 8 liter Viper V10 engine because America. It has no doors. Yes. Fiberglass. It's got C4 suspension. It's got C4 suspension. Fun fact, you want to tell them why C4s are actually awesome and idiot journalists ruined it forever about the suspension? Um, like the leaf springs? They're not truck leaf springs. Mm -mm. They are very special in a way, unique to the Corvette. Composite. Yeah. They're actually awesome. Mm -hmm. What else about this car? Completely insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We think this engine will fit, do we? Fair. It'll fit. <laughs> hopes and dreams, hopes and dreams. So and for everybody that was disappointed that I did not do that Jabberwocky build a few years back with the Nissan GTP body, don't worry, your time is coming. But we're gonna do it together with the Genius Garage students. I think it'll be fun, because basically they got everything done. And now we have to find something cool to do with their last month. So let's build something completely bonkers. <laughs> yes, ride the dragon. That's not drug euphemism, is it? In this sense, it's just about cars and insanity. See ya. I guess a few days later, and I am now over being sick, so it's been a while. Hey, Sean. Yes, sir. Has not seen our dragon. I think the internet's gonna make a weird sexual reference out of that. Oh, most definitely. I got keys here somewhere. I'm, I swear I'm cool. <laughs> there's, there's keys. I'm looking for keys. There's keys. Here. Somebody catch. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. They're smart. They don't have to be good at catching. Let's get it. <laughs> I sit down at the bottom if you don't mind. Check it out. It gets a lot cooler when you realize that we're gonna put a Viper engine in it. Here, check out the rear end and stuff. You can see the differential and the fuel tank and all real easy. Yeah. See how everything's real accessible? It's just super just like straightforward. You can just Work on this super easy and everything. That's gonna be crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get it out. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's pretty cool to give them the chance to do this and build their own car um, with Genius Garage in that regard. But it's not the first thing to do. So the reason why with Genius Garage, the professional level race cars work out so well for the curriculum is they're professional levels. So it requires proper teamwork, mindset, and risk, management of risk. Uh, and you have to have the accountability to do a job right, learn now on the fly, and make something work. And those are all very important qualities when people are going to get hired. And that's why Genius Garage has been so effective of helping young people get amazing jobs and launch awesome careers. The only problem with all these high-end race cars uh, is once they get to a point where they're so nice, um, there's not necessarily that much to develop. So the F1 car is largely developed. It's, it's small things to do. 
The Corvette has been nice for a bunch of years for Genius Garage because there's always things you can develop. It's a little more primitive in that way. Still sophisticated, but primitive in that way. And that's why this is going to be fun because they can take something that's already something, but build it and make it decent. Uh, and here's the motor we're going to use. Ah, yes, here's the Motorsports wiring harness, one of the last ones that were still in stock uh, from Chrysler. But yeah, so all aluminum, eight liter V10, which is properly old school hot rod bonkers for the Dragon. And it just barely fits. And by it just barely fits, we are gonna have to cut and re-weld some tubes, um, do some engineering, practical engineering, and make that happen. So I do hope you guys subscribe to this series. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna come together pretty quickly. We may not finish it entirely in the next month before you know the majority of students are gone. But one of the other students is sticking around a little longer and he's going to work on it. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of fun to come in the future with it. So I'm excited about it. And I'm also excited about doing the Dragon because it's, um, it's a blank canvas. And it also doesn't require lots of work with things that I would say aren't going to be as necessary for teaching students great things. So like back when, when we did with Genius Drives the Lycan, there was a ridiculous amount of time in its stupid body making it nice. And you know, that, that takes away some, but for this, it's a lot simpler. It gives them all the experience and taste they need to really learn how to build cars and fabricate. And there's gonna be an opportunity for people to learn how to weld, understand a little bit of composites, a little bit about painting, and then all the practical engineering with actually getting a drivetrain in, making good decisions with systems and componentry and coilovers and wheels and tires and brakes and how they all work together as a system. So you can make something that doesn't just work and run and look good on the street, but it's actually a good performing an awesome car and then also we think about how we're going to finish it off so it's tasteful you know perhaps reflective of the 1950s but obviously having the modern thing going on so how do we make it not look like a chachi sema built car you know what i'm talking about did you see a godforsaken ugly nouveau hot rodded out 1958 testarossa in sema last year yeah it was horrible we're not going to do that okay onward <laughs>
Yeah, this is way harder without a camera guy. Don't, do not even comment that I'm not showing this properly. You're lucky it's getting shown at all. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm talking about, Aishan. <laughs> Damn trolls. Oh, I don't understand why he doesn't just have a magic camera crew here. Oh, isn't this TV? Why, why doesn't he do the things that happen in my head? Oh. I'm not going to make a political joke. I really want to, though. Okay, I'm going to say 18 inches apart. You got those three? Yep. All right, let's go measure this and get an idea where we can put our motor mounts. Structure. What did I say? 19 inches? No, 18 inches apart, 6 inches from the... And then what was the forward of the... Okay. Here. You. Got you. 19 forward, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll be damned. Dude, it's literally in about this exact same place. 19 forward and six and a half high. Yep. Is that right? We know six and a half from, that would be much lower. It'd be down here and then 18 apart, right? Yes. Oh, that is wild. The motor mounts are similar place, but with that being 18 apart, they need to be like right about here, which is fine because check it off. We're going to cut these mounts off and then we're going to have to cut this tube out because the pan will be here and the new cross member probably have to come from this to about here, go across right here and then we'll bring that in and then we'll run longitudinal tubes from that node up to here. And then we can create a something, another one coming across in front of the motor, which will also protect it with it being a little lower than the chassis. And then we can still use these as motor mounts. Um, just thinking if we want to have a vertical time. And we'll have to see what we're doing with the rest of it, but that'll work. Oh, and then what was the width of it for the headers? Was that 18 inches or 19 inches? Remember that? 18. It's 18. Wait, oh, 23? Yeah, it's 19 inches. 19 inches for about the head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine inches. Nine and a half. So that means the headers are going to be like right about here. So that's like. That's not all in the room. So. Personally, I've got headers for my Viper. I haven't put them on yet. So I may just give my factory manifolds to the Genius Drive project if they'll fit. Because these don't poke out a long, long way. Can you see down in there, buddy? See the exhaust manifolds and the heat shields? They don't poke out a lot. So I think those may work if we. Boy, I don't know, buddy. Hmm. It's gonna be tight on the exhaust, you know that? See, the other problem is, is like that's cool and all, but it's gotta go down, and then it's gotta go forward to come around the front of the foot box and go down to the side pipes. Which is interesting. So if we look at about right there where the factory mount is in relation to the motor. The motor mounts way forward. The motor mounts between the forward most cylinder and then the, the forward most cylinder and the second most where the motor mount is. So a reason I'm bringing that up is how far forward does the exhaust have to come in relation to the motor to do that? Because there's not a lot of room in there. Man, that is tight. And I don't mean in that dumb swing 1990s way. Did they say that in our shower? No? I thought I heard another dumb nice line. Maybe he might have actually. He might have actually said that actually. So then the forward most cylinder is going to be right about here on the Viper. Which is kind of a pain in the butt. Because if you look right there, it's going to be right 
here, that's supposed to be the end of your foot box. So, now it's only 19 inches, then, or is it 19 inches? So that'd be, be like right here. That's not, that's not a lot of room. We may have to modify the footwell to make a bulge or a big dent in the corner to get the exhaust to go by, to go around and come out of side pipe right there. make it tricky because there's got to be three pedals in it and they're going to have to be over to the side. I think there's going to have to be a bulge here for the exhaust to get it out. It may seem nutty but it's still better than how Bill Thomas Cheetah was because in the 60s Bill Thomas Cheetah was very similar to this and the Chevy was mounted so that all of the exhaust tubes came straight over top of the footwell and then they went down the side here and then went to the headers or went to the side pipes which worked but oh my god it would bake your feet i i raced one once and even in a short race like five laps in the foot box was becoming so hot i swear i could feel the leather on my shoes starting to shrink and get tight so that was a little much so on this if we can keep manifold collected like up in here like factory and then just the tube going around i mean it's still gonna be hot but we can put some really good modern reflective radiant reflective materials on it and there's going to be some there's going to be air movement around the motor and then through the through the transmission tunnel so we're going to want to definitely put keep reflective stuff on it thank you it's going to be fun All right, so how are you feeling, Shannon? Feeling pretty good. What are you excited most about this project? Uh, big scary V10. <laughs> how about you, Richard? What are you most excited about? Yeah, Viper V10. <laughs> Just shoving the thing in there? Yep. You can't say Viper V10 now. V10 Viper. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> All right, subscribe. Come back for more Dragon Action.